Hello, everybody, and welcome to another ho uh, collective Hotelier Pulse report session in collaboration with our founding members and members, Great Hotels of the World and Guest Centric. Uh, this is our third session of the Hotelier Pulse report, and we have a great guest joining us today all the way from Brazil. But before I introduce our guest and bring Pedro into the call, I just would like to take a reminder uh, to remind everybody, take a moment to remind everybody to uh, please make sure uh, for our next session that you, uh, if you're a hotelier, to click on the link in the window, uh, in the, in the, yeah, the link in the window that's uh, coming up and please add your input to that survey because the more information and data that is provided into that survey, then the richer that the report can actually be. And also uh, what we'd like to encourage from the audience today, if possible, is if they'd like to submit a question for the next survey, something that you'd like to have uh, some feedback on or if you'd like to see any data on in specific uh, terms there. That, so please make sure that you leave us a question there. Now, in this session today, we are covering the findings of the 10th edition Hotelier Pulse Report. And in this edition, this is a, a year end edition for the review of 2020, actually. And this is analyzing the key market trends from booking behavior to channel performance in 2020 versus 2019. And we're also a review of what hoteliers worldwide are expecting for the industry's recovery in 2021. So with all of that said, I'd like to introduce uh, Mr. Uaho Corte Real, from, who is the general manager of Tivoli Hotels and Resorts based out of San Paulo in Brazil. Uaho, lovely to have you here. Thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much to give me the opportunity to share my experience with you. Thank you. It's great to have you. How's the weather in uh, Brazil? It's okay. It's summer here, so uh, weather is Brilliant. beautiful. Brilliant. Excellent. Also joining us is, of course, Mr. Pedro Calaco, CEO of Great Hotels of the World and founder of Guest Centric. Pedro, lovely to see you again. How are you? Good to see you. Uh, we're doing okay. It's not summer here, so. <laughs> but I was in Miami last week, so. Uh, no, but, it's uh, certainly not. A little bit better. It certainly isn't summer here either, unfortunately. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, let's let's get started into it. We've got some interesting uh, data here that I'd like to bring up for the session. Uh, the first one is essentially uh, from the reports of last year that domestic travel made a conservative comeback in 2020, representing 49.7% of nights booked per annum versus 23% in the year of 2019. So, Yuaho, I'd like perhaps to start with you and, and ask you how has yours, your hotel, and other local hotels in your area responded to that demand? Uh, here, of course, of course, we are we are very focused on the on the local market. Uh, but, but first of all, I would like to summarize what's happened in the last year and share with you what is the, what is the feeling, the sentiment that we have here, special during the year 2020. Uh, it's important to say that Brazil is, is a large country with more than 200 million inhabitants and divided by states like, like the United States. Uh, and this means that, uh, for example, the, the, the things that we practice here in Brazil, in uh, Sao Paulo, is completely different from what's happening in Manaus, Bahia, or Rio de Janeiro. Referring to the state of Sao Paulo, I would say that most uh, hotels closed in March, April 2020, and reopened in September. Uh, the hotels were never forced to close, and the option to stop the activity was related to the lack of guests and business in this, in this region. In our specific case, we stayed five months closed from April to September. We restart our activity from the moment we had some airplane crews returning since they guarantee a business base that justified the opening. And during the closing period, we shortened our team and took advantage of the government support measures for the rest of the staff as revenue was zero throughout this period. When we reopened in September, occupancy um, was around 30 to 40 percent. Restaurants worked quite well with several restrictions, um, such as 40% of the room space capacity, opening from 10 p.m. and finishing serving alcohol drinks at 8 p.m. And people, uh, we see people especially from the state of Sao Paulo, in Brazil in general, but I would say most of our guests are local guests, between 7 to 80%. And... Uh, uh, Again, uh, Brazilians and 30 to 40 percent of them from the state of São Paulo. So, local market is really important for us, and we focus our strategy in terms of sales uh, and promotions, uh, of course, um, on the local market. 
Okay, great, great. Um, Pedro, obviously yourself with uh, guest, guest centric and ho- and great hotels of the world. What 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 are you seeing in terms of these numbers? Is that something that's representative of your hotels as well, even though it's not uh, in Brazil? Well, obviously Brazil is a very special market where uh, a lot of the travel has been domestic, and uh, really our hotels are mostly in Western Europe and the US. Um, and but but I mean we had seen a trend coming through 2015. 2019, where international travel was really taking a bigger and bigger share in terms of uh, of what was happening, and because people were very mobile, you know, Airbnb obviously drove a lot of uh, of international travel. Low cost airlines drove a lot of international travel, and we really saw that sort of the the, the share of uh, of domestic fell from about 50% in 2015 to about 25% in 2019, and then obviously with the lockdowns and the travel restrictions. In um, in the in 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 2020, we've seen really an uptake of domestic travel. Um, it's now getting uh, very close to where it was in 2015. And actually, what we're seeing the early trends in 2021 now is actually that it's even more so. So so international travel is very very dependent on air capacity. Mm-hmm. Air capacity has been severely restricted. Uh, travel. Um, uh, you know, restrictions have been put in place between many, many, many countries, and that obviously has had an impact, which means that we're seeing, I would say, in the high 40s to, to uh, percent of all, all traffic right now going to our hotels is domestic. Mm-hmm. Joaho, well, how's the uh, the sentiment now in the new year with 2021? Uh, let's just say, for example, the first quarter, just generally within the, the region there, how's the sentiment with uh, the hotelier community as a whole? Yeah, uh, regarding the sentiment of the industry, after the reopening, there's a positive expectation uh, because we start to worry about the vaccination and everything. So the feeling was very positive at the beginning from September until until uh, one month uh, ago. Mm. Uh, but this feeling was losing strength as the cases increased uh, significantly. And the governor of Sao Paulo was forced to take more restrictive measures in order to control the, um, the pandemic. Uh, currently, restaurants can be open only until 8 p.m. on the weekdays. And um, on weekends, we are only allowed to serve guests through room service. So it okay. was very restrictive. Yeah. I think I would say that in general, uh, the hotels are still suffering a lot uh, from from all the restrictive measures, but the vaccination plan is already in progress here in São Paulo, and they're doing quite well. So there's that leaves us some hope. At this stage, there's no expectation of having a Q1, a good Q1 or Q2. Events, weddings, uh, meetings are being postponed to the last quarter, which we believe is a period that will return to a certain normality. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, moving on to the next one. The tenth edition of the report marks actually an eight percent decrease of hotels, still showing in a complete shutdown scenario. So, from thirty-one percent in November of twenty twenty, uh, in that survey, it went from thirty-one to twenty-three percent in the December twenty twenty survey. Now, it seems that resorts represent the majority of hotels with minor restrictions. So. <laughs> And Wahoo, taking hotel property segments and local restrictions into consideration, how are these segments currently positioned within your region? Um, regarding the segments, there is also a change here. This hotel had in the past above all groups and corporate segments with short stays, typically from people who come to do business in Sao Paulo. And currently, we notice an increment of people who come in leisure, including families, uh, which was rare at this, at this hotel. There were practically no children in our hotel before. And today, we have to adapt our um, offer to this type of public, offering suites, family rooms, which increase greatly, especially during, during the weekend. So uh, in the past, we had more occupancy during the weekdays uh, with, with uh, corporates and groups. And now... Um, we we perform better during the week weekends um, with a <laughs> leisure with leisure with leisure segments. I think the reason for that is because São Paulo continue to have some attractions, and many people come to stay with us, special from the surrounding cities, and they come here basically to enjoy restaurants to do some shopping uh, because they were locked down too much time at home. So when the economy reopened, they they, they travel to São Paulo to to do some shopping. 
um, they don't need to travel by 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 plane. So the, as I mentioned before, they they come from the surrounding cities, and um, some people also come to visit some museums that are work working quite well with uh, with uh, with some limitations, of course. So, but even in the, this pandemic period, uh, São Paulo continue to have some some attractions, and again. Um, I would say that 80% of our guests now are leisure, uh, comparing to the past that we have like 30-40% uh, of leisure, and most of the guests come uh, from the corporate segment group. Mm -hmm. And uh, Pedro, are you seeing similar numbers yourself in, in, in your yes. hotels? Yeah, so it's 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 quite surprising uh, this result of the survey in December yeah. because uh, I was expecting really that the curve was going to keep going up to, because our um, our relationship with our hotels is very close, and a lot of them are cl are closed, are basically shut down. So I was very surprised that there was a decrease in December versus an increase in December of, of hotels in shutdown. I'm not sure um, why that is. I do believe that um, uh, some people did the survey early in December, and they may have decided to shut down their hotels later on. I also think that it's interesting that. Uh, in December, 30% of the resorts said that they were in recovery. So I think they've had a good summer and they were sort of banking on a good year end with, you know, with Christmas and New Year's Eve and so on. And mm -hmm. then sort of the lockdowns came into place and, and sort of threw that by the wayside. So I'm, I'm, I'm anxious to see the, the January results to see if, if, if this is a trend of, you know, actually people are opening up because that does not match with what we see in our in our customer portfolio so i would expect this number to be much higher to be very honest so i was, I was very surprised mm -hmm. okay here here we have another hotel in the bahia region it's um, a resort a big resort uh, in bahia and they are performing very well to be honest with you i think that we are suffering much more here in the city so again no corporate no 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 events no weddings but uh, but the, the 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 resorts here in brazil and the, in the countryside they are performing sometimes better than they perform on the years before so yeah we, we see that we see that in, in in other markets also so uh, yes yeah which is an interesting uh, trend i think people are looking now for for to, to open space to have more fresh air not to stay at the city and uh, and um, i think some some business some some hotels some resorts are doing very well very well Mm. If anything, it shows that people are still very keen to want to get out and about. So I don't think there's any yeah, any uh, yeah. any interest in the demand there. That's definitely yeah. there. Okay. You know, and actually, let me add just one thing to, to what you just said, Andre, because it's very yeah. interesting. So, so you know, we, on the great hotel side, one of the things that we do is we do activities with our hotels and put them in front of meeting planners and 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 meeting buyers and so on. Mm -hmm. And uh, and and uh, and one of the comments was that. Um, they're a little bit fed up with the virtual events now. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So there, there's some fatigue of doing virtual meetings with buyers and so on. And they're Correct. dying to get back on the road. And we're, we're seeing some hotels now actually already booking um, trips for the fourth quarter uh, to go visit the UK, to go visit Germany. So I think everybody's ready to go. It's just, you know, get the pandemic curve into into a controllable state, get the vaccination out there, and then and then everybody's going to be ready to go. Yeah, yeah. I think um, the the interesting thing is is that whilst there is that obviously there is still that demand, but how are the hotels also ensuring that there's that the cleanliness is is assured? And and I'm not saying that they're not clean. I'm, of course they're clean, but there is this now COVID expectation of of sanitation and mm -hmm. and and. and uh, all of those. Is there a special message by those hotels to the to the audience that, or to their customers, that you know, basically, we are doing extra cleaning to make sure that it is safe for you to travel here, or are people just taking the normal uh, expectation and just going anyway? They're they're kind of thinking, well, it doesn't really matter. Let's just travel. I would say here in our specific case, we we hire international consultants that uh, gave us a help to, yeah. to, to, to do all the, the, the protocols and safety measures. We have a lot of visual information uh, in all hotel, uh, not only at the, at the reception, but also in the rooms, in the, in the, in the outlets. Uh, and uh, in addition, we have a partnership with a benchmark hospital here in Sao Paulo. And uh, the idea is to give, to give uh, 
some some confidence to the customer to stay with us. The, the, the protocols are very strict. Uh, we really follow them, and, and and I think that we we pass this 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 message of safety to guests stay with us. Mm, mm, okay, great. Okay, look, before we go on, I'd like to also just uh, remind everybody watching and tuning in that uh, Lay is going to be putting in a, a link into the, the comment section for our next survey or for the next session survey. So if hoteliers are out there watching, please uh, do click on that link and make sure that if you're interested to add your data into the survey, because obviously the more that uh, Pedro and his team get, the, the more rich and in detail these reports and this data can be. So please uh, keep an eye out in the comment section for the URL and uh, make sure that you add that data. That would be amazing. Thank you. Okay, so moving on to our next session, Uaho, the, the other interesting point obviously and i don't think it's really any surprise anymore is that direct channels are showing the most the, re the most resilience in in the booking channels or in the process um now obviously in 2020 that was the case it generated around 58.6 percent of the bookings um in 2019 uh, which was outperforming uh booking by 41.5 percent expedia by 22.8 percent and the gds is by 26.6 percent so how would you say yours and other local hotels there have responded to to that demand and how do local hotels expect to capitalize on this in 2021 what what is it that they're doing to ensure that they're really m maximizing the direct opportunity uh, here uh, i would say that uh, our main strategy is the is, uh, our focus is uh, to offer special conditions on our brand.com and uh, reservation center. Normally what we do, we offer special rates or we have some heavy values like uh, SPAC credit, F&B credit, uh, but there's still many reservations coming from OTAs. I think the, here in our hotel, OTA is representing something between uh, 30 to 40% of our market mix. Uh, it's difficult, it's difficult to, to to, to force the guests to, to, to make the bookings through our websites. Uh, websites from ATAs are very friendly and special here in Brazil. They allowed installment payments, which is something very popular in Brazil. And I think the decisions to make bookings through booking.com or to Expedia.com is because they allowed the, that, that installment payments. It's, it's difficult, but, but uh, again, our websites are performing well. I would say we are competing with 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 OTAs, uh, and um, I would say that they represent here thirty to forty percent of our um, total total market. Okay, so you, you mentioned obviously the websites aren't ideal. So is 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 that something that hotels have focused on improving in that that experience for the booker so to, to try to make sure that the direct experience is maximized or have they essentially left what they've had in place and and just uh, hope that it's been adequate um, we here in brazil we we are very aggressive in terms of uh, direct communication with guests uh, social media is very uh, it's 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 a, a essential vehicle here in Brazil. So we we talk a lot direct to guests through the social media. Um, for example, changing here a little bit from reservations to F and B, we have our restaurant on, on our rooftop that has more than one hundred thousand followers, and our marketing department has been working with direct communication with our guests, promoting cocktail events, lives, chef tables, experience, so on and so forth. So allowing us to serve more than 100 guests per period, which is an interesting number taking into consideration all the Sao Paulo restrictions. So, and we do the same for reservations. We have a direct contact to our guests, a lot on social media. Instagram is, is, is a huge, uh, a huge platform to, to communicate with the guests, promotes and special rates, credits, everything. So we do through the social media and, uh, and and, and we perform very well on these on these platforms as well. So it's this is the way that we have to 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 collect more direct reservations instead to be uh, so so in the, reliant to, to, on the on the Booking.com or Expedia or other OTAs. Mm -hmm. How have you changed your your uh, your distribution strategy to support this year, if at all? Uh, we. 
our sales strategy has changed dramatically here. Uh, we are, again, more focused on the local markets. We have our, um, our promotions are made in different ways, namely through the sales representatives that we have in Rio de Janeiro, Bahia of Brasilia, and obviously in Sao Paulo. Our big effort is in Sao Paulo, which is the state with more room nights in our hotel, representing something between 30 to 40% of our total room nights in this, in this property. Uh, so we we are on the daily basis in contact with with our uh, with our um, sales promoters and and they are working well. Again, I will not say one hundred percent, but eighty percent are on our efforts are on our local market and direct bookings. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Pedro, I don't think it's really. I mean, are you surprised by these results? I I, I don't think we should be really. Do, do you? I mean, everybody's been uh, affected by uh, this, including uh, yeah. Today. I'm not. Su- I'm not surprised, but I am. I am. Uh, I am uh, how can I say this? Um, I am quite um, uh, proud that the direct channel is so resilient, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Because uh, maybe this is a, an opportunity for for people to understand that, especially in these times of pandemic and so on people want to direct contact to the hotel and uh and and really that that uh, direct has outperformed booking.com and expedia by by so much the, uh, in the past year where you know the, the the drop was was smaller the recovery was much faster and actually we had sort of a reasonable almost normal summer is quite um is quite um surprising not so i wouldn't say surprising but but it's it's a really it's really good news i think this is also dependent on there's more domestic travel domestic travelers are more inclined to book direct than international travelers because they have the confidence that they're not going to be left out in the cold and uh and again that's another uh positive thing if hotels really try to stimulate domestic travel um not only are these people you know local people but also um, they are going to book more direct. Therefore, there's going to be a better bottom line for the hotels. And, mm-hmm. and at the end of the day, in this recovery, everybody's looking for guests. Uh, but I think people should also be looking for profitable guests, right? Yeah, um, yeah. Just don't sell at any, point, at, at any price, right? I think that's a good point. We have a question here from uh, an audience member, Michael Kunche. Michael, I hope I pronounced that correctly. Uh, and that is, do you believe that luxury travel will face tougher competition after the end of corona crisis or do you expect business to jump back to the level before the pandemic? Raho, how do you feel about that? I think, I think of course, we will suffer um, during this pandemic and the recovery is, will be slow. But, but at the end, I think luxury market, I think that uh, we, we continue here to have our regular guests. We didn't drop the rates. We continue to, to, to have guests there are that, uh, that uh, believe on us and the, the, the rates that we offer justify the value, the cosmos space. So I think luxury market will have a quick recovery uh, comparing to the four star or three star hotels. Mm-hmm. This, again, I think uh, even, even, even the events and weddings that, that were postponed for, for the last quarter, uh, people continue to, 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 to arrange, to, to organize events and weddings here with us. Um, the price is quite high, so I think that we'll recover better comparing uh, to, 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 the other, to the other hotels. Okay, interesting. Okay, so moving on, uh, following the steady increase in hoteliers expecting revenue declines of 50% or more last year versus 2019, the start of 21 is actually uh, showing a 4.4% decrease in respondents who share this sentiment. Um, mm. So that's also interesting. So, Riaho, what would you say is the reason for this shift in sentiment, perhaps? Uh, I, I think, again, all of us have, have a lot of expectations about what's happened with the, with the, with the post-COVID period. At the beginning, as I mentioned to you before, uh, people were, were very positive. Summer was not so bad in Europe, so we continue to have international guests coming to the, our hotel. So there was a lot of expectations. Uh, although, as we seen the the, the, the the numbers increasing, and uh, since we have more restrictive measures, I think people are not so positive now. I think people we will see that with the recover, we start to feel the recovery, special from second semester. Onwards, uh, I, I would say that the, these first six months 
we continue to suffer a lot, in my opinion. Of course, we continue to operate with uh, 30, 40, 45% occupancy. That's my best expectations for this period. Again, rates, we continue, we don't, we don't want to drop the rates. We continue, you, you, we want to continue to offer nice service, nice spa, good restaurants, and people continue to pay the same rates. Uh, and, uh, and I think that is something that we have to pass through this uh, during the next uh, few months. And uh, from July onwards, I think that we will see some recovery. But again, we will, to, to have the numbers that we had in 2019, will take, in my opinion, two to three years to, to, to have the same performance. Yeah, I think that's uh, the general sentiment across uh, most regions. Pedro, I think you'd agree, right? Yeah, no, no doubt. And, and actually, I want to go back to, to the, the point of luxury recovery, because I think mm -hmm. in the first wave of the pandemic, uh, we saw that actually budget hotels and, and sort of the, the lower end was doing better because I think there was still some corporate travel that was going on and sort of, you know, people that had to travel. Um, uh, what we're seeing now with the second wave, and actually it's sort of interesting now in January, we're seeing a, a big increase in ADR of booked nights, uh, which means that actually the, the, the luxury segment is doing better than the, the lower segments in the second wave of lockdown. So, so I think that there may, again, we went through one wave, but the second wave is looking very different than the first wave that, that we went through here in Europe. Um, and the second thing is, I do believe that there's an effect uh, on the study in December that people were closing their books and they actually realized, a bunch of them, that actually the price didn't go down as much as they sort of thought they, it, would, right. it would have gone. Because they know what their, what their advertised price is, but actually what matters is the, the price at which the rooms were sold, right? And actually what we've seen is that the consumers are willing to spend. There, um, a lot of people that weren't traveling internationally were willing to spend that money domestically. So they ended up selecting potentially, you know, upgrading the, 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 the facilities that they would be going to because they would be saving on the airfare. So we are, we are sort of uh, uh, very, I would say, I wouldn't say bullish, but we are very um, um, sort of uh, hopeful that this, um, this not getting into price and discounts and so on is a trend that's going to hold and we're not going to degrade the positioning of our destinations going forward. Mm -hmm. So optimistic. Yeah, I, I, I totally, I totally yeah. agree. I think, I think that uh, uh, I strongly believe that those who have lowered the prices will have more difficult when the market returns to normal, you know? Uh, so I think that uh, the luxury market uh, decided at a certain point to, to keep the price, to keep the rates, because otherwise it will be very, very difficult, the, the recovery. Mm -hmm. I think this is also a really good message for everyone, essentially, because histor historically, that's not something that's happened. And I think now we're starting to realize the value of holding those rates yeah. because it maintains Maybe the value. Revenue managers have something to do with that, right? Yeah. I think there's, there's yeah, absolutely. Way. Absolutely. But it just goes to show as well, over the, let's say even this in the last five years, the, the, the difference of mindsets when it comes to that and, and the way that that side of the industry or business is approached, I think has become a lot more sophisticated which is very, very good. Correct. Okay, great. So I'd like to just also ask, well, how the, as I mentioned before, there has been a need to put a special cleaning program in place um, and it's risen in importance once again and it actually now ranks third in the list of short-term recovery priorities for, for this year. Um, and, you know, we were also seeing a lot of uh, sites now that have special badges that say that they are, you know, Correct. COVID ready, et cetera, et cetera. So would you say that this is the case also in, in Brazil and in, and in your region? Uh, yes. And if so, why? I mean, how, how are you, for example, how are you approaching it from your side? Yeah, what we did here, it's, uh, again, we, we hired an international consultant. Uh, they come, they, they implement a, a program, they stay with, uh, with us for several months uh, during the closing period. Uh, there's a lot of uh, training sessions for our staff. Uh, we implement all the protocols. We have audits every, every month here at our hotel. So uh, a different consultant come here, a different auditor come, come here to check every, if everything is in place. I think uh, people, our staff observe this very well. Uh, they, are, they are really committed and follow all the, the protocols. Uh, we have a stamp. Uh, we have a stamp saying that we are uh, that we have these uh, these uh, these uh, all the procedures in in, in place, and uh, 
we announced that, of course, it's it's uh, it's also a marketing way to say that we we have everything and we are ready to to to, to welcome the guests mm. and, and uh, of course and, and pass the confidence to guests to stay with us. Uh, we have here and there some guests that complain a lot because you are very strict here uh, and they said okay i i went to another hotel i visit a different uh, state or a different resort and they don't have so strict measures but at the end i think that we are doing okay and we are doing well and this is the this is the way until until we have until we have uh, all the vaccination in place i think that we have to follow all these all these measures mm-hmm. i think it's fair to say it's probably going to be for some time yet right so it's probably uh, going to just become the normal way yeah. of doing operations yeah. on that side. Pedro, are you seeing the same thing as well? In, yeah, no, the cross uh, what, we're see- what we're seeing is that, you know, as the pandemic loosens up, this tends to be less of a, a concern, both with consumers and with the hoteliers. And as the crisis uh, escalates, this becomes top of mind again, and people, again, think about, how can I do this? I think a lot of the hoteliers we speak to are very concerned about somebody, you know, being con- you know infected in their hotels and that mm. sort of uh, d- damaging their reputation and i think that it has to do you know this pandemic is very uh it goes up and down right the the numbers are bad the numbers are good the numbers are bad the numbers are good and i think that changes the mix here of of concerns i do think that on this um uh, uh, item though that there's a lot of people and this has been steadily increasing from the beginning of creating special offers and packages and that really means, you know, either giving some value add, as as Ron was saying, you know, an F and B voucher, a spa voucher, whatever I can do to really wrap it up uh, into a, a, a thing that makes people want to come, right? Whether it is, you know, packaging it with some local activities that are still open, or yes, or, or you know, or offering breakfast when typically you wouldn't because people don't want to go out for breakfast, and we see that. These small things make a whole lot of difference in terms of how hotels position in terms of empathy towards the the consumers and the guests. Absolutely, mm-hmm. yeah. absolutely. Yeah, well, we're also I mean, obviously we're perhaps focusing more on the room side of things when it comes to that cleaning program. But have you also adjusted, or did that also also include the food and beverage side of the operation? And 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 what were the main differences that were applied there? Yeah, we we have a lot of restrictions here when you talk about F and B. Uh, here in Sao Paulo, uh, at this point, we, or, we are only allowed to serve meals until 8 p.m. Mm. We notice, of course, uh, different behaviors from, from guests that normally here, traditionally, we, we eat late at night. But now they come to, to, to have dinner at 6.30, 7 o'clock and stay <laughs> until, until 8 p.m. And then 8 p.m. we shut down all the outlets and we mm. continue to serve our guests through, through, through room service. Uh, Okay. Uh, here and there, of course, we, we do some promotions, especially we have a, a very nice restaurant at our rooftop. We have small events, cocktails events, uh, chef tables uh, experience, something simple uh, with all the measures. For example, the capacity of the restaurant now it's, can be only 40% of the normal capacity. Uh, we have the, the social distance. Uh, all the people are using glasses and face shields and, and gloves and everything. So we have all the protocols in place. Uh, at the beginning, it was a little bit strange, to be honest with you. But now, even our guests, they are, they are, they they feel safe and they feel uh, uh, they feel that we are doing the things on a good way. Uh, but uh, again, things can change. So two weeks, two weeks ago, we we, we were allowed to to serve uh, meals until 10 p.m. As as Pedro says, uh, things come up and down, and we have to adapt quickly. And follow the measures that that uh, for in this case for the state of São Paulo. Mm, mm. Okay, great, uh, very good. We have a question as well from a, a gentleman uh, who I I think is in Brazil, uh, perhaps maybe not, but uh, the name I won't even try and pronounce. Okay. I'll just go with um, <laughs> Felipe. <laughs> uh, Joao, did you differentiate online experience from competitors and OTAs? And if you did, do you have more direct bookings as a result? Um, we, 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 we did what Pedro already mentioned before. So we normally, on, if people book through our website or of our uh, central reservation, 
we give some uh, we include the breakfast normally at um, on the rates uh, and again it's it's nice make the difference we have a nice breakfast with a wonderful view uh, over the the skyline of São Paulo so it's 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 make the difference we offer vouchers we offer vouchers spa vouchers uh, and F&B vouchers uh, and uh, we also try when we have the guests here saying we book through through direct through our website we will give an upgrade so we invest a lot on the direct bookings and to, to create this confidence in our guests to book directly through us. The problem here is, as I mentioned to you before, uh, OTA is very popular around Brazil. Uh, it's, 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 it's difficult to, to fight with OTAs. Uh, they are very important to us. They represent a lot of market. Again, 35 to 40% of our market comes through OTAs. Mm. Um, and and the, the, the apps and the, the websites of OTAs are very user-friendly. Uh, they they can parcel the payments, which make the difference when we are booking. This is something that we are not doing now. Uh, but of course, our our priority is for the direct bookings, and and we invest a lot on this. Okay. Right. If, if I may just follow up, so please, I guess please. You haven't really seen a change in mix in 2019 versus 2020. It's very similar in your hotel. Is that is that correct? Yes, correct. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Because we, have, we did see a different mix, uh, mostly in Western Europe and, and the U.S., where uh, you know direct has been has grown significantly, and actually in January it's growing even further, and it's now at forty eight point five percent of all bookings is through the direct website. So, so, so it's really sort of a, a trend that we're seeing, at least in the in the portfolio that we have in Western Europe and the, and the U.S. Yeah. And a follow-up question from Philippe Joao is, do you feel that guests have different expectations and different purchasing behaviors? Uh, I think uh, after we reopened, I think we noticed that people spend more money, to spend more in our hotel after the reopening. I think people was locked down too much time at home. And when the, the economy reopened again and they are allowed to travel and to stay at hotels, so, so I think at the beginning we noticed that people really want to, to, to spend more money, to, to ask for better wines, uh, to make uh, proper meals with uh, everything, uh, starter, first quarter, second quarter, dessert, everything. We saw a lot of cocktails. So that's the beginning. Um, things now return to a certain normality. And I think the, the habits and the, the, cons the habits consumptions are, are, are the same uh, before the, uh, the, the pandemic. Okay. I would just say that my personal alcohol consumption goes down after the pandemic because I'm drinking really? way too much. Wine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're not the only one, Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> I think my whiskey, my whiskey cabinet has never been so dry. Okay. <laughs> okay. Pedro, do you have any other uh, slides that you'd like to add uh, to the session yeah. before we? Well, let uh, me Honestly, uh, let me just, uh, I, I think it is it is interesting just to take a look at, at this slide, which is sort of looking forward, right? And, and looking forward, we saw a, a big um, sort of degradation of, uh, of, of sentiment within the hoteliers about when the, they will recover um, to the same financial position as the year 2019, right? So in June, there was still 70% or so of hoteliers that thought that this was going to be okay because we were, you know, bookings were growing and the summer was coming and the, and the markets were in, right? And everybody was very optimistic. And we saw a, a steady, a slow but steady degradation of that sentiment. Um, I think that it's good news to some extent that in December that sentiment has sort of flattened out and people do still believe that in 2022 we're going to have a good year. I, that's also where I sit uh, personally, because um, I do think that vaccination, what Israel is doing is just amazing, right? And there was a report that came out today that says that actually the vaccine is much more uh, effective than, than actually they, they thought it would be, that um, after the second dose, they saw an immediate drop in cases. And, and, and I'm very uh, optimistic that if uh, in, in our markets, right, in, the, in Europe and in the U.S., we get the vaccination thing uh, in mm -hmm. place that, uh, that 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 things are going to be okay in 2022. And as I was telling you earlier, Andre, I was in Miami last weekend, and in Miami they've converted a parking lot into a into mm -hmm. a testing and vaccination facility. So you never leave your car. You you arrive there. You do your online booking, 
and then you have a QR code. You arrive there, you show your QR code. It's straight ahead for uh, testing, uh, go right for vaccination. And they process 2,000 tests and 2,000 vaccines per hour. And this is just one of the facilities they have in Miami. So 2,000 vaccines per hour is half a million a month, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. So I think if, if governments, if local governments um, get their act together, um, we're going to be in, in, in a relatively reasonable shape into 2022. And there is, I think that there's this pent up demand um, that a lot of people want to travel and they want to, and they, they're, as soon as they're vaccinated, they're not going to be afraid to jump on planes. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I think, um, we just have to, you know, but as Juan said in the beginning, we have some some tough months ahead, right? I think February is going to be difficult. March is going to be difficult. April is going to be difficult. Uh, maybe May things are going to start improving, and and hopefully twenty twenty two is going to be back to sort of normal. Right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that's the general sentiment. Uh, okay, great. Uh, we have another question from a viewer, um, and that's Del Valle Anaya. I hope I pronounced that correctly. It's wonderful seeing all these amazing names. Um, <laughs> Well, I hope Brazilian talent has spread all over the world during the last decades. How many of that talent has found a welcome back to the industry in Brazil at this moment? Um, uh, Brazil, Brazilia is, is, a, is a, as I mentioned to you before, is a huge country. There's, there's, it's, it, and it's different from region to region. Okay, I think São Paulo is an amazing, amazing place. Uh, there's a lot of. Uh, uh, talents here, uh, especially in São Paulo, a lot of people come to from the from the countryside or from to the to the other states to São Paulo because São Paulo have more than two mi 12 million hundred inhabitants. People come here to São Paulo to success. Um, there's a lot of good people working on hotel industry here. Um, I was surprised to see the quality of the hotels that we have here in São Paulo. I think if you go to the countryside or if you go to the different states, it's completely different. Mm -hmm. But in São Paulo, all the big brands are here. Uh, they are performed before the pandemic. They performed very, very well. Uh, 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 I really believe that, uh, as as Pedro said before, that uh, uh, after uh, six, seven, eight months, uh, special 2022, we'll have all these people working very well. There's a lot of talent here. Uh, I really believe in this in these people. Um, they have a lot of international experience as well. Again, here in São Paulo. São Paulo has a big metropole. There, there's a lot of talent. A lot of people come here to success. And um, 2022, I'm, I'm very confident that uh, the things return to a certain normality. Yeah, yeah. So you, basically, I think what you're saying is you don't have any fears about being able to ramp up the staff talent that you've had historically. No, perhaps. no, no I'm, I'm very confident. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, uh, guys, we, we've literally come up to 45 minutes, so I think we should perhaps uh, wrap this session up for today. It's been uh, a great session. Uh, we have uh, one, more, one more question come through on the comments, so let's quickly get to that one. Um, Joaho, I understand that your unit have a SPA. Is your costumer keen to use that service during the pandemic lockdown? Does SPA services survive this moment? Spot. Yes, that, that, that was something that was something that was quite surprising for us because we thought at the beginning that uh, all the things that we heard, people not use the spa. Uh, but the spa is performing quite well. Uh, we, we opened and uh, initially we reduced the schedule, the timetable of our spa, um, thinking that they are not, that the, we, we will not have so, have so many guests to spa. But uh, it was a surprise, and people, um, they are confident, again, they, they, they believe in our protocols, and they come here and they use the spa, not only guests that are staying with us, but even outside guests. We have a, a very popular brand, and Antara, and Antara Spa is our brand. It's a, a, Thai, a Thai company. Uh, I would say that we are one of the best spas here in Sao Paulo, very well known, and the performance is, is, is very good. It's, it was a surprise, but it's, it's very nice. That's good. That's good. Please excuse my uh, actual uh, spelling of that word. I think everybody knows how the word spa is spelled. <laughs> too many, we, we deal with too many acronyms in this industry. So yeah. 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 All right. Excellent. Okay, gentlemen. Well, listen, thank you so much. We really appreciate uh, your time. Duajo, of course, thank you for joining us from uh, beautiful Brazil. It's uh, lovely to have you on the session. Um, and to everybody watching, uh, thanks again for watching. 
And please don't forget to check out the 10th edition of the Hotelier Pulse Report on the LinkedIn event description page uh, for more 2020 year in review insights and the industry expectations for this year. And if you'd like to receive the 11th edition directly in your inbox every month, uh, please do take the survey we shared in the chat and we welcome also su suggested survey questions from, from everybody who's been watching. Um, if you can't put the questions into the chat, you can also email them directly to us uh, at info at Tech Talk Travel or to uh, Melissa Rodriguez at guestcentric.com. That's Melissa with a double S and Rodriguez, R-O-D-R-I-G-U-E-S at guestcentric.com. Um, okay, so... Uh, gentlemen, un until next time, uh, unless there's anything else, I think we'll uh, wrap it up here. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you to everyone for listening in and sharing their data because only by sharing data can we come together as an industry and really overcome this, right? We have, uh, we have a, a rough period ahead, but, you know, the light is under the tunnel, and I do think that the light is getting brighter. All right. Absolutely. Yeah, I Thank think you, so, Andrea. too. Thank you, Pedro. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.